This screencast is going to walk you through how to find the data that you need about the moon and the moon phases. So we're at the time and date website again, similar to what we did for the sun calculations. We're going to come to this tab, which says sun and moon. And this time we want the moon calculator. So we're going to click that. And it takes us here. We need a city because different times go with different cities. Okay. Again, we're going to use Austin. It's, I know we're not in Austin, but we're, we're close enough. Okay, so we're just going to click Austin. That's, that's good enough. All right, and it takes us to this set of information. All right, so right now the little default says that it's going to give us moonrise and moonset information. I can change to something else if I want to, but this is where we need to be for right now. So I am making this video on Friday, August the 18th, 2023 at a little after 12, excuse me, at a little after 2.40 in the afternoon. If I wanted to go outside and face the moon, I would have to face south, southeast. Remember the um, degrees and the compass directions that I gave you in the compass rows that, you know, like zero was north, 90 was due east, 180 was due south, etc. So that's what this number is. You'd have to be kind of south, southeast. The moon altitude is similar to the sun's altitude. It tells you how high above or below your horizon is the moon. If the altitude is positive, it's above the horizon. If it's negative, it's below the horizon. So right now, the moon is 63.7 degrees above the horizon. But um, just because I go outside and look for the moon, I might not see the moon. And we're going to get into why that is kind of in more detail for Unit 5. But just understand that the moon right now is a waxing crescent moon, just a thin little crescent of light showing. But if I went and tried to find this waxing crescent moon outside right now, I would not be able to see it. And it's not because the moon isn't there. It's just, it's really close to the sun in the sky. And the sun is so bright that I am not going to be able to see the moon that's up in the sky as well. Okay, but it is there. All right, here's the moon's distance from Earth. Date and time of the next full moon, date and time of the next new moon, and then the time for the next moon set, which is going to actually be this evening at 9.39. All right, and then we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to see a table that's very similar to the table that we saw for the sun calculations. Okay? All right, I want you to notice that the dates of the month are here. It just so happens that there's a little symbol on the 1st of August, and if you hover over it, that little symbol indicated that August 1st was a full moon, and the full moon occurred at 1.31 p.m., because really the full moon is actually absolutely 100% illuminated at a certain point in time, but we usually just assign it to that day. So August 1st was a full moon, nothing in the moon rise. And now we have moon set. Why do we ha not have moon rise and we have moon set? Well, because the moon set for August 1st happened earlier in the day than the moon rise. So basically on August 1st, the moon set at 624 a.m., which is close to the time that the sun's coming up. And then the moon rose that evening at 854. So it was basically doing the opposite of what the sun does. Okay, the moon on August 1st passed the meridian at 112 a.m. Um, for you guys, that means like when was it highest in the sky? It was highest in the sky when you were probably sleeping. How high in the sky was it? Well, there's the altitude. It was 34.2 degrees above the horizon. Here's how far away it was from Earth. And when it passed the meridian, it was 99.4% illuminated. Remember, it's absolutely 100% illuminated at the instant that we have full moon, which is 1.31 p.m. Anyway, um, but we call the whole day, the day, you know, it's the full moon. Okay. Then I'm going to come down here. Um, 
and notice that the day, the times and stuff are gradually shifting. All of the percentages are gradually shifting. Here, we now have a third quarter moon. This is on August the 8th. Again, this is a phase that's sort of more of a moment in time. And by the 8th, we have the moon rising before it's setting in the day. So it rose super early in the morning, like right after midnight, and set mm, in the afternoon. Okay. So we have two like moonrise categories or columns because sometimes we have the moon rising earlier in the day than it's setting. And sometimes we have the moon setting earlier and then rising. So that's why you've got more than one column. Okay. And again, the meridian just tells you um, the time that the moon was highest in the sky. And this little thing in parentheses tells you how high it was off of the horizon. All right. So now I scroll down here and remember, oh, I'm going to catch this, the 16th, that's all darkened in. If you hover over that, that's when we had new moon. And again, it's just a little moment in time, but we usually give August 16th as the credit, you know, that's the day of the new moon. So whatever. Uh, down here, the 18th. If I don't move my cursor in here and I just keep it out to the side, it starts at 12 midnight and it tells you the data at 12 midnight. The moon is below the horizon. That's why the number is negative for the altitude. Um, it's in the northwest direction at a heading of 306, and it tells you moon is under the horizon. Now, if I take my little cursor and I start moving it, then I can change the time on the right-hand side and that also changes the altitude and the heading. So basically, if I want to if I want to stop like right here, um, then I stopped it at 3.20 p.m. for the 18th, which is, I don't know, coming up in a few minutes. Altitude 65, headings 181 degrees, which is basically south. And the position the moon is over the horizon, so the moon is out um, if you go outside. But you can't see it today, like I said, because it's too close to the sun. Okay? So you can pretty much click on any day that you want and get the specific information, okay? When the moon is rising and setting depends on the phase of the moon. For instance, the um, full moon way back up here was basically setting when the, when the sun was rising and it was rising when the sun was setting. But at new, new, new moon, uh, a new moon basically rises about the same time that the sun rises and sets at about the same time the sun sets. So when the moon is rising and setting just kind of depends on the phase of the moon. Now, this is really important, the percent of the moon that is illuminated. So for instance, this one was our full moon day. It was basically almost 100%. Okay. When you go to this page, it's going to show you the percent illuminated for the current day right here. So today is the 18th, 5.4% illuminated. Right now it says 5.3% because it hasn't quite reached its meridian. By the time it gets to the meridian, which is the highest point in the sky for the day, um, it'll go to 5.4. But what that means is this whole entire side of the moon that faces the Earth, only 5.3% is lit up or illuminated. Okay, I do have some other options up here um, if we want to click and just kind of get some other information. So this kind of looks like the same as what we just looked at, but it tells you um, both of these locations, what phase of the moon, when is the first quarter, when's new moon, those are the phases that follow the phase you're in. Here are your principal phases and when they occur, and then there's a big table of all of this other stuff, which you can look at, but you know, it, I'm not sure you really need any of that today. All right, sun and moon today, again, this is a little bit more of a concise maybe um, idea of everything that we've looked at. It shows you the moon 
Tells you the current time. Here's when the sun rose. Here's when the sun is going to set. Here's when the moon rises today. Here's when the moon is going to set today. Here's how many hours of daylight we're going to have today. And this little number in here is telling you that today's day length is a minute and 37 seconds shorter than the day length from yesterday. So the days are getting shorter. And then here's your little sun position, which I think we've gone over. Um, and several of these things are kind of similar to some of the stuff that you've seen already. Okay, if you're interested in knowing about some more events, we can go to um, eclipses and you can kind of look through. There is an eclipse that we'll talk about that's coming up in October. There's a big deal eclipse coming up in April. And then there's some other eclipses if you're, you know, curious about them. Okay, and then just for fun, if you're interested in some things going on um, in the night sky, tells you how long nighttime is. Remember, this is based on us selecting Austin, Texas. Um, can you see Mercury? Yeah, you can see it until this time. Can you see Venus? You know, yeah, from this time. Okay, and it kind of tells you, would you have to be like up in the early morning or could you be looking late at night? So that kind of gives you some interesting stuff. Okay, so for instance, Mercury sets at 9.07 today, rises at 8.58 the next day. Venus sets at 7.12, so you're not going to catch Venus because it sets before the sun. And it comes up at 6.26 tomorrow morning and all of that. Oh, sun and moon, if you wanted a little concise summary.